Something in my office. Okay, let's get started. So today, what we're going to be doing, uh, well, first of all, some announcements. Um, first, let's talk lab. Today's lab is the reactions lab. And don't forget that last week's lab is due during, during this week's lab. That way, after we go over the information today, you have everything you need to do that. 
those calculations if you have not already completed them. So with respect to lab, it's not going, there's not going to be a quiz because we haven't gone over that information. And as far as the order you do things, it's up to you. You can either finish up last week's lab and then do this week's lab, or you can do it and vice versa. This week's lab information, we will be covering really next week in class. So again, it's not going to be due until next week in lab. That way, basically, you're getting the information and then you can complete the data sheet and uh, post lab. So that is the lab announcement. Uh, I just wanted to remind you, you do have a homework that is due Monday night, and you have a quiz that is due tonight. The quiz due tonight is over the same information that the homework that was due last night was over. Um, I'm sure, sure I'm forgetting some announcements, but those are the main things. Any questions? And if you're missing anything, you'll get it back today in lab as far as if you aren't here when I hand it back the test or if you aren't here when I hand it back the lab grade, you'll get all that back in lab today. So. And then um, the other announcement I wanted to make is I believe you have one week to the W deadline if you have any courses you're needing to withdraw from, whether it's this one or a different course. Most of you are fine, and if you want to come ask me, I can tell you where you stand. Um, but most of this class is fine. But if you have a question, you can come ask, and I can tell you. I will not be available though today to ask that question. Any questions? Yes. What does it mean? Okay, so what does it mean to have a W? Um, if you withdraw before the deadline, you will receive a W on your transcript and there will be no grades that count against you. It does not count for you. It does not count against you. As far as transcripts go, you don't want too many W's on your transcript because too many W's do look bad up the line. But if you have a W here and there, it's, it's fine. And so that's what a W means, is that you just simply withdraw, withdrew from the course because you didn't think you were going to pass the course typically. And um, it's going to show up as a W, but it won't impact your GPA. Now, before you withdraw from courses, and I don't know how many people know this stuff, so it's actually real good information. <clears throat> before you withdraw from courses, you should always check financial, your financial aid, your scholarships and stuff. Um, the reason you should check your scholarships and stuff is because some scholarships require you to maintain a certain number of hours. And if you fall below that number of hours, then it can uh, impact you. Some scholarships, like the lottery scholarship, I want to say you can put, fall below a certain number, but you've got to make it up by the end of next semester. So there's a lot of things financial aid related. And so it's always best to check your scholarships or go talk to financial aid to see how it would impact you. But as far as a W on your transcript, that's, it doesn't, it just comes up as a W. And then you would retake the course at some point. Other questions? Okay. So, okay, Zoom has done something weird.
but I can fix that. Okay, so on Monday or Tuesday, gotta remember what day of the week I'm in and what day of the week I had you last. <laughs> on Tuesday, we started talking about molarity and that's gonna be our primary focus for the rest of today. On Tuesday, we simply looked at how to determine the molarity of a solution. But today, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using that molarity. Um, we're gonna use it as a conversion factor uh, in a simple conversion, but we're also gonna use it as a conversion factor in reaction calculations. Um, after we talk about it as a conversion factor, then I'll do the dilution calculations. And the reason I'm choosing to do it in this particular order is because I don't, um, dilution calculations are only good for a dilution. They're not good for reactions. And I see too many students get in their mind that they can use them for reactions and you cannot. So, um, molarity. Molarity is moles of solute over liters of solution. Um, it is a fraction. Because it is a fraction, it makes a very good conversion factor. It's a conversion factor that allows us to convert between liters and moles. And so that is where we're going to actually start today's discussion is with that concept. So let's look at examples and see how we use the molarity. I'm gonna do the same thing I did with you on Tuesday with the chemical reactions. I'm gonna walk you through how I take what I'm given and what I want to solve for and piece out how to get there. So, um, the first question we're gonna answer is how many grams of NABR with a molar mass equal to 102.9 grams per mole would be needed to prepare 700 milliliters of 0 0.230 molar NABR solution. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is the same thing I always do and that is I'm gonna list everything I was given so I was given the molar mass of NABR. That is going to be 102.9 grams of NABR is equal to one mole of NABR because that's what that fraction stands for, grams over moles. It's that many grams over one mole. I was given 700 milliliters of solution and I was given 0 0.230 molar NABR. Now folks, um, common issue is people see this molar but they don't try to break it apart into its components. Go ahead and take the second it takes to break it down into its components. It will help you figure out how to do the conversion. So every time I see molar, I actually break it down into its components of moles over liters of solution. Now the next question, 
is what are these pieces of information am I going to begin my calculation with? What is my starting quantity? I'm getting all sorts of answers. And here's how I decide which answer to go with. I look for something that has only one unit. Look for something that has only one unit. <coughs> so in this particular case, I'm going to start with the 700 milliliters of solution, and I'm going to convert that into grams of NABR. Okay. So, first thing I notice, I'm dealing with two different substances. Two substances. Means I'm gonna need a way to convert between solution and sodium bromide. When I see solution, as one of those substances, I automatically think molarity. because molarity has solution in it. So for this particular one, <clears throat> I will be using the molarity of 0 0.230 moles of NABR per one liter of solution. The next thing I notice is I am dealing with milliliters. But in order to get to the conversion, I notice I have liters. So I'm going to need the metric prefix system. which there's a thousand milliliters in one liter. The last thing I notice is grams and grams always means the same thing. And that is molar mass which I was given as 102.9 grams of NABR equals one mole NABR. So I actually was given everything I need except for the metric prefix conversion system. So now I'm ready to start this problem, 700 milliliters. of solution. There is 1,000 milliliters of solution in one liter. I chose that particular conversion factor because I needed to get rid of milliliters of solution. And I'm left with liters of solution. Now I need a conversion factor that has liters of solution and that is gonna be the molarity. So 0 0.230 moles of NABR. is to one liter of solution. 
I chose the leader of solution in the molarity to go in the denominator because I needed leaders to cancel out, leaving moles of NABR. But I was asked for grams of NABR. So I need the molar mass of NABR. So there's 102.9 grams of NABR in one mole of NABR. The mole portion was placed in the denominator so that the unit and the substance would cancel out, leaving me grams of NABR. And now I'm ready for my calculation. So when you key this into the calculator, you get out 16.6 grams of NABR. Yes. Would you do a significant math for a problem like this? Would you use the beginning uh, value that you use? You know? Yes. So when I do significant digits in stoichiometry, ninety nine percent of the time, the significant figures are determined by the original values in the problem. Let's look at another example. Now I'm going to have to make one up. Uh, what volume of 0 0.380 molar NaCl contains 28.650 grams NaCl. Again, I'm going to make a list of the information I was given. I was given 0 0.380 molar in ACL solution. And I was given 28.650 grams of NACL. I need to figure out which piece of information I want to start with. If you take time to write out what molarity actually is, it's more, it's, it becomes more obvious what you should start with because ideally we always start with something that has only one unit associated with it. And by my, writing out the molarity, you'll see that it has two units associated with it compared to the volume, I mean, compared to the mass of NACL that I gave you. So we're going to begin with the 28.650 grams of NACL, and it is that that we're going to convert to milliliters of solution. I notice that I'm dealing with two different things, NACL and its solution. Because I see solution, I automatically think of the molarity as the conversion factor. So one of the conversion factors I will need is going to be the 0 0.380 moles of an ACL is one liter of solution. 
The next thing I see is I have grams of NaCl. Grams means I'll need the molar mass. Adding up the molar mass of NaCl, it is uh, 58.44 grams of NaCl is equal to one mole of NaCl. The last thing I notice is I need volume in milliliters, but according to the molarity, it's gonna be in liters. So I'm gonna need the metric prefix conversions. where a thousand milliliters is equal to one liter. Now that I have my conversion factors figured out, I'm going to start this calculation. So 28.560 grams of NaCl. My first conversion factor is gonna have grams of NaCl. So that's 58.44 grams of NaCl is equal to one mole of NaCl. The gram portion went into the denominator so that the unit and the substance would cancel, leaving me moles of NaCl. Now I need to use something to get it to volume and that is gonna be the molarity. Now here's the thing, fractions, can either be the way they are written or you can flip the entire thing depending upon what unit you need to get rid of. I need to get rid of moles, so I'm going to flip my molarity. I'm gonna put the 0 0.380 moles of NaCl on the in the denominator with the one liter of solution in the numerator. I flipped it because I knew that I had to get rid of moles of NaCl. Now, we have liters of solution, but we want milliliters of solution. So a thousand milliliters of solution is equal to one liter of solution. The liter portion had to go in the denominator so that the unit and the substance cancel, and you are left with milliliters, which is what you were asked to solve for. And you get out a value of 1,286.07 milliliters of solution for an answer. Yes. Six, oh, yes. which makes it uh, slightly different. 1,290 milliliters of solution. What was the answer to the problem with the different words? 16.6 grams.
any questions? Then let's put it into chemical reactions. Twenty five point zero zero milliliters of zero point one three one molar H two SO four was required to neutralize. Twenty seven point four six milliliters of KOH. What is the concentration? Of the KOH. Okay, so looking at what I've been given, I've got 25.0, uh, first of all, the chemical reaction is H2SO4 plus 2KOH goes to make K2SO4 plus two water. Now, let's figure out what um, I need to do. I have 25.00 milliliters of H2SO4 solution. That is 0 0.131 molar in concentration. And it neutralized 27.46 milliliters of KOH solution. And we have been asked what is the concentration, the molarity of KOH. So if you're asked for concentration, they're asking for the molarity until you get to Chem 2. And then it could be a variety of concentrations. But for Kim 1, it's just molarity. Okay, so looking at this, first thing I'm going to do is take that molarity and I'm going to convert it into its subunits of moles over liters. I do that because that quickly tells me that's conversion factor. So that is not what I want to start the problem with. The question is, which of the volumes do I want to start the problem with? And the answer is I'm going to start with the 25. The fact is, you don't want to start a problem with the substance you got a question about. You want to start the problem with the substance you don't have a question about. So we will be taking this 25.00 milliliters of H2SO4, and we will be converting that into milliliters of KOH. Okay. First thing I notice is two different substances. Whoops.
And any time I have two different substances, it means I'm going to use the mole to mole ratio, which in this case is one mole of H2SO4 go, uh, is for every two moles of KOH. The next thing I notice is that I have a volume. Well, the only thing that has volume in it is the molarity. which is 0 0.131 moles of H2SO4 per one liter of solution. Now, the other thing though that I notice is my volume here is um, in liters, but I need milliliters. So I'm going to wind up needing the prefix system. Who knows if I'll need anything else along the way, but I know I'll need this much. So now I'm ready to begin this calculation. So 25.00 milliliters of H2SO4 solution. My first thing is going to be to convert that into liters of H2SO4 solution. There's a thousand milliliters of H2SO4 for every one liter of H2SO4. Then I can take that liters of H2, and the milliliters had to go in the denominator so that the unit and the substance would cancel, leaving me liters. Now the liters, I'm gonna to go to the molarity. So 0 0.131 moles of H2SO4 is associated with one liter of H2SO4 solution. Where the liters cancel out, leaving me moles. But I don't need H2SO4, I need KOH. And so that's where my mole to mole ratio is gonna come in. There are two moles of KOH for every one liter, I mean, for every one mole of H2SO4. The one mole went in the denominator so that the unit and the substance would cancel out leaving me moles of KOH. Now, here's where you have to think. You have, you were asked for the molarity and molarity is moles over liters. You have the moles because if we complete this calculation, it is 0. 00655 moles of KOH. To finish out this, we need the liters of KOH solution, which you can get by taking that 27.46 milliliters of KOH and converting that to liters of KOH. and plugging that in to the denominator, and then completing the calculation.
and you get 0 0.239 molar KOH as an answer. Folks, what I just did is I worked one of the post lab questions. Now the post lab breaks it down so that you have to get an answer. At this point, you get an answer at this point. You get this answer, you get this answer, and then you plug them together to get this answer. So it breaks it down into individual steps, in other words, <clears throat> but it's the same problem. And three significant digits is the correct number of significant digits for the moles and the molarity for the volumes you need four significant digits because you were given four significant digits questions about that problem A student used nineteen point five two molar or milliliters of zero point two zero five molar NaOH to determine. the amount in grams of citric acid in a mixture. The reaction is H3C6H5O7, which is citric acid, reacting with three sodium hydroxides to form sodium citrate. And three waters. What I want to know is what is the mass of citric acid in the mixture? Okay, what I was given is I was given 19.52 milliliters of sodium hydroxide 
that was 0 0.205 molar sodium hydroxide. Rewriting the molarity of sodium hydroxide into its components, you get 0 0.205 moles of sodium hydroxide per one liter of sodium hydroxide solution. Looking at what I was given, I wanna start with something that has only one unit. So I will be starting with the 19.52 milliliters of sodium hydroxide solution. And it is that that I'm going to convert to grams of citric acid. Breaking this thing down. Sodium hydroxide solution and citric acid are two different things. So I'm going to need a mole to mole ratio. And the mole to mole ratio is there's one mole of sodium hyd of uh excuse me H3 C six H five O seven to three moles of NaOH. Next thing I notice is I'm starting with volume of NaOH. Volume is telling me to go with the molarity. So that's going to be the 0 0.205 moles of NaOH per one liter of NaOH solution. Then I notice that I have um, grams. Anytime I have grams, grams means molar mass. So I need the molar mass of this substance. So that is 192. 0.124 grams of um, C or H3 C6 H5 O7 is equal to one mole of H3 C6 H5 O7. There is one more thing that I noted in my process here, and that is. I started with milliliters, but I need liters. I started with milliliters, but ultimately I need liters in order to be able to use that molarity. So I'm also going to need the um, metric prefix. where there's a thousand milliliters in one liter. Now that I have all my conversion factors, I can start this calculation. Starting with the 19.52 milliliters of NaOH, 
I'm going to start by converting that to liters of NaOH. Using the uh, metric prefix conversion factor. The milliliters went into the denominator so that the unit and the substance canceled, leaving liters. Now I'm ready to use the molarity, 0 0.205 moles of NaOH is to one liter of NaOH. Again, the liter went in the denominator so that the unit and the substance would cancel, leaving me moles of, Na of NaOH. I then use the mole to mole ratio for every three moles of NaOH. You get out uh, one mole of our citric acid. The moles of NaOH went into the denominator so that the unit and the substance would cancel, leaving the moles of citric acid. And now I can use the molar mass of citric acid to convert that into grams of citric acid. And the answer comes out to be 0 0.256 grams of the citric acid. Again, this is one of the post lab questions. And as far as the post lab is concerned, it breaks it here, here, ask you for the molar mass, and then it asks you for the mass. So I wanted to do a couple of those as an example. You can do a variety of things with this, which is what makes molarity a little tougher than what we were doing on Tuesday. Molarity, you can get to moles of a compound. You can get to the molarity of another compound. You can get to grams of something. You can get to volume of something. That's what makes it tough. So learning the tricks that I was trying to show you is what's important. Learning to take and analyze, okay, what am I gonna need in order to do this problem. That is the entire, that is the hard part with molarity. And if you can do that, it makes the problem much easier. Like I said, you could probably pretty much memorize what to do for molar, uh, for mass to mass conversions, but it's a lot more difficult when you get into molarity because of all of the possibilities. Any questions? I will say that that um, flow chart I gave you gives you at least a little bit of the conversions with molarity. Molarity can be a conversion factor, or if you need the molarity, you will notice it's literally written as moles over liters um, to help you along the way. 
So conversions, using molarity, there's a variety you can do. The next thing we're gonna talk about is dilution. And many of you have been doing dilution because you're in biology at the same time as chemistry. In biology, you see it as C1V1 equals C2V2. This is the generic formula. Because C represents any concentration unit. It could be percent. It could be molality. C represents any type of concentration unit. For Chem 1 and mostly for Chem 2, we instead use M1V1 equals M2V2. In other words, we specify the concentration unit. to be molarity. So don't confuse the two equations. They're the same equation. One's just a bit more specific than the other one. Now, when working, so some points to make. Point number one, the equation is only valid when the starting material and ending material are identical. You cannot use the M1V1 equals M2V2 in the problems we have done so far today. You cannot use M1V1 equals M2V2 with stoichiometry. In fact, use of M1V1 equals M2V2 for stoichiometry on Dr. Wise tests earn you zero points. Even if the answer is correct. It's in writing. I will not allow it for the type of problems we were doing previously. 
You cannot use M1, V1 equals M2, V2 on stoichiometry. Because when you use M1, V1 equals M2, V2 on stoichiometry, you're eliminating the mole to mole ratio. Okay, point number two. The word of. means that that volume and concentration go together. Back up here, when I used 1952 of 2.205, the of told me those things were together. They were the same substance. Three. It does not matter. which concentration M1 is as long as the volume of a specific concentration is given the same subscript notation. In other words, you could be looking for M1. Or you could be looking for M2. It does not matter which one is the one you're looking for and which one is the one you're given, as long as they're kept together. So let's look at a couple of problems. You need to make 300 milliliters of a 0 0.40 molar NaCl solution. All that is available is a one molar solution. Determine how to make the dilution. Okay, it kind of gave it away that this is a dilution problem. So that means I'm gonna need the equation M1V1 equals M2V2. My of is telling me that these things, these two need to be kept together. 
So M1 is uh, 0.40 molar. V1 equals 300 milliliters. And the other one is M2 will be 1.0 molar. V2 is what we need to figure out. So here's the other thing, and I forgot to make this a number four above. It does not matter what the volume unit is. As long as V1 and V2 have the same unit. Okay. So looking at this, if I rearrange M1V1 equals M2V2 to solve for V2, it's M1V1 over M2 is going to equal V2. Plugging in my information, I have 0 0.40 molar times 300, point, or 300 milliliters divided by 1.0 molar. which comes out to be 120 milliliters as V2. So basically what it is, is we're going to have to take 120 milliliters of 1.0 molar sodium chloride and dilute with water to 300 milliliters. To obtain 300 milliliters of a 0 0.40 molar NaCl solution. Yes. With our problems, we'll always dilute with water or you'll be told it's something else. So if it's not water, you're told what it, you're diluting with. Yes. It depends upon how it's worded. In this particular sense, statement, it says determine how to make the dilution. So, so this is how you make the dilution. This is just, this answer is just what volume of the 100, of the one molar you needed. Yes, if you put 120 milliliters of one molar and 180 milliliters of water, that would be the same. Yes. Would the 120 milliliters not be the B1 in this? Again, it does not matter as long as the V remains the constant, goes with it. And since I said up here, it did not matter that 
in this particular case, I said 300 of 0. 0.4, so I just made those stay together. Those could have been V2, and these would have been V1. So you can switch them. You can switch them. It does not matter which one is V1, which one is V2, as long as they're kept, the appropriate units or the appropriate volume and molarity are kept together. Other questions? I don't have time to do another problem. Dilution is straightforward, but the notes that I made were the key notes to be aware of. Any questions for me? Everybody sign in. Okay, I will see you in lab. And hopefully I helped you with your post labs. <laughs> I missed last week because of COVID. Yes. Um, I get some credit since we're working on part of the lab today. And I'll obviously help them with